All right, we'll call the board meeting for Wednesday, March 16th, 2022 to order. And uh, in attendance is David Phil, Jane Nevinsmith, Joyce Chunglo, John Moskevitz, and Amy Parsons. This meeting is being recorded and all votes will be taken via roll call. Uh, first order of business is consent agenda 2.1. We have warrants AP2236S, AP2236, AP2236-2, AP2236V, AP2237, AP2237S, and PR2219. We have minutes from April 7th, 2021, April 14th, 2021, February 2nd, 2022, February 16th, 2022, and March 2nd, 2022. We have a one-day liquor license for Pyramid Group, Amherst Area Chamber of Com Commerce, Margarita Madness. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Anything on there anybody wants to talk about? Uh, Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Evan Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right, next is public comments 3.1. We'll limit this to 15 minutes and please limit your comments to three minutes each so that everyone has a chance to speak. Anybody here for public comments, turn on your camera, wave at us or raise the digital hand. Well, I guess I'll be the bad guy. Uh, we need to put on our agenda uh, to go back to in-person meetings at some point. I guess we need to discuss it soon, sooner rather than later. All right, we can put it on uh, for next agenda. Make that decision. Jennifer, can you put that on there, please? Thank you. I guess I'll, ch I'll chime in too on this one. Uh, didn't realize that water rates were not going to be on this week like we had said it was going to be. I'm a little disappointed. I know everybody has been busy, but we had made a promise to get that on this week and it's not there. Carolyn, are we almost ready with the numbers that we need to talk about that or? You're on mute. Of course I am. Yeah, my apologies. We just, we had to get the budget in complete ready for um, finance and capital and that did absorb all of our time. So um, yes, if, if you want that for the six, we can do that. Yep, if that's our next one, let's do that. Okay. We're coming, down, we're coming down to the wire here with all of this stuff going and budget stuff going and Route 9 project work going. And, you know, I, um, I'm not going to get into it because I can get a personal side of it myself, but um, I can do that when it's fully presented. Okay. Jennifer's going to have her whole agenda built tonight. <laughs> Any other public comments? Last call. Okay, keep going. Uh, 4.1 Texas Roadhouse change of beneficial interest. Is someone here from Texas Roadhouse? Hi, good evening. Elizabeth Pisano from Upton, Connell, and Devlin on behalf of Texas Roadhouse Holdings LLC. Um, this is a change of officers application, and we're seeking to add Donna Epps as a director and remove Doug Thompson as the COO without a replacement. And there are no operational changes to the restaurant. Right. And Jennifer, everything good on town end? Everything is fine. The application is complete. This is a routine change that Texas Roadhouse does a couple times a year. So I think we're okay. Make a motion to accept the change for Texas Roadhouse. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any discussion on this? Uh, Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. 
Sorry, and Parsons. Yes. Sorry, the phone keeps ringing. All right. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, you too. All right, uh, 4.2. Human Resource Manager Hiring Committee recommends the hiring of Gen Jennifer Trovato. And the resume is attached to uh, board docs. And uh, Carolyn, I'll let you present this since you've been working on this. It wasn't, I just want to let you know it wasn't there this morning. So I have not had a chance to look at it. OK. Um, the, as you know, the screening committee met, um, screened the original applications and resumes, and we <laughs> narrowed it down to five. We did interview those and then narrowed it down to another additional interview for three. And uh, unanimously, um, one candidate stood out. And I would, um, my uh, request is that after I introduce um, Jennifer, it would be another Jennifer, so that would be three. But um, I, I think Jennifer's on the call right now. There she is, right in the middle for me. Um, Jennifer stood out, her personality, her fit, her many years of experience doing HR. Um, this will be her first for municipalities, but we really feel that the fit is important as well as the skill set. And we can, we can come alongside her um, and support her through the municipal transition. But um, this is Jennifer Trovato. And Jennifer, if you want to just introduce yourself and why you are interested in Hadley. All right. Hi. Uh, I'm, I go by Jen, so I know there's multiple Jennifers going on, but uh, I have about 15 years experience as a general manager and operations manager. Uh, and I recently went back and received my MBA from Bay Path University with a focus on human resources. I've done a lot of hiring, a lot of coaching, and uh, I found this job and thought that this would be a really good fit for me. Uh, I really enjoy the community. I've lived in the Valley for 20 years, and I think my skill set really fits well with the job position. I did not get a chance to read your resume, Jennifer, so I'm sorry. I'm going to be asking a couple of extra questions. So do you have any um expertise or any background in uh, union negotiations at all? No, I do not have a union background. Okay. That's no problem. I've been doing unions for the last 50 years. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to learn more about them actually. Okay. Where was, your, where was your last job? Uh, I currently am the general manager at Roberto's in Northampton the restaurant. I've been there for about eight years running that place. So I'm excited to switch industries and get out of the nights and weekends, you know, restaurant life. My neighbor originally owned that restaurant. So oh. yeah, the Sinkowitzes. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I know Charlene really well, actually. Uh, oh, do you? Oh, yeah. great. You actually kind of look like Charlene a little bit <laughs> <laughs> with the long, dark hair and the dark eyes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Any right. questions? John, Jane, Amy? Uh, Carolyn, who was on the hiring committee, just so people watching? That was Susan, Linda, myself, Joan, both of the uh, police chiefs. I mean, both of, I'm sorry, both of the chiefs, fire chief and the police chief, and Deb Radway helped facilitate it. Did I miss anybody, Susan or Linda? Nope, you got them all. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion to uh, accept the nomination for our human resource director and Jennifer Tovato. Tr Is that how you pronounce it? Trovato. Well, welcome uh, and good luck in Hadley. Thank you. I'll second that. Okay, motion by Joyce, second by Amy. And uh, last chance for discussion. If I can just uh, tell you that that's effective April 4th. Okay. Just around the corner. Yeah. All right. And this is a full-time position? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. And will Deb hang on to, to uh, train her a little bit? Yes. We, we Jennifer, uh, Deb and I are talking. Can I see Deb on there? I see Deb yes. R, if that's Deb. Um, 
I'm here. Do you want to answer that, Deb? I know we've talked a little bit about it, but Jane was asking specifically. Sure, I'm planning on uh, working with Jennifer to introduce her to the Municipal uh, Human Resources Association folks and our neighboring uh, community HR people and to um, provide some mentoring and orientation to the HR role in Hadley for the month of uh, April. Perfect. And a little union negotiations thrown in there somewhere, Deb? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Anything else before we vote? Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Ruskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right, Jen. Well, congratulations and welcome to Hadley. Thank you. All right. Thanks, uh, Jen. And so April 4th, you said that's the start date? Okay. Yes. All right. Sounds good. All right. We'll keep moving on. Uh, 5.1 Reservoir Wedding. Uh, Morgan Young asks that she and her fiance be allowed to marry at the Lower Reservoir in late summer. Um, I'll just read this. My fiance and I are hoping to tie the proverbial knot this year with the optimism that the current plague-like cir circumstances will lessen by August or September. We met at Hampshire College just over eight years ago, spent much of our time together dipping our toes on the floating dock of the Hadley Reservoir. Uh, despite the seemingly ever-present snapping turtles' best efforts, we would not be dissuaded from canoodling in what we both consider to be one of the most beautiful places in Massachusetts, the entire world. We want to invite 30 of our most loved ones to watch us say how much we love each other on that very same dock, but we have no clue how to go about seeing whether this is possible. So, sounds kind of cool. Um, Jennifer? It does, uh, it does not appear that the lovebirds are here to uh, discuss this. Um, they, I did send them the invite and they said they would be here. They might be running a little late. I don't know if you want to table it or um, wait for them. I would, I, I would, I, I know exactly what you just read. So I would like you to wait if you don't mind till they come, if okay. that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, let's table it and we'll, we'll come back to it. Last, last thing on the agenda. Okay. Do we have jurisdiction over that or does Kestrel know? No, we still own the land. As long as it's um, uh, in compliance with that uh, conservation restriction, I believe it is, or, or whatever you want to call it, on the land, we can we can allow the use. So. Probably ought to run it by them and see. I don't think they need to be involved in it. It still is Hadley property. They only wanted to have the trails um, in it and deem it conservation property it not necessarily is owned by Kessel Trust it's still owned by Hadley and and the thing I want the only thing I have a question of and we can ask them if they do show is uh, parking and how many people I assume we would do one day parking reservoir permits but we need to check that with Mike Mason probably actually the permits are issued out of your office and I did mention to her that without them being residents, I didn't know if we could allow parking, but um, I just sent her an email. Why don't we let her come in and then y'all can tackle it with her because she had an idea about additional parking. Yeah. Well, they said 30 people like yeah. in there in that thing. So it would be 30 plus them plus I'm assuming a photographer and, and whatever. Mm -hmm. I, uh, Personally, I don't see any issue with it. Take a small deposit for trash cleanup or something like that for afterwards, just in case. And um, other than that, it sounds like a cool use of the, the outdoor area for someone, some, for something nice, so. Yeah, sounds hey. good. But, yeah, but we'll I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go to 5.27 Shaw Lane. The owner of the new house at 7 Shaw Lane is requesting not to extend the water main as the regulations mandate. And instead he is requesting to run a one inch pipe. And attached is a letter um, for a proposal. Looks like from Carl's. David, I put those in under administrative content because I didn't know if the uh, people who provided the quotes would want their names set out because they were a quote to an individual. Oh, okay. Well, 
Well, we have Scott here from DPW, and so he can speak to the to the water regulations. Scott, do you want to talk about a little bit what the regulations call for? Looks like he's working on unmuting. Jennifer, can you unmute him as host? I'm trying, but I think he and I are fighting each other. Oh, okay. Or he might. <sighs> he some, just said, come on. Give him a sign language or something. <laughs> Lip read. Hey, Scott. In person meetings. Scott, if you can hear us, um, we can't see you on camera anymore, but if you want to just go ahead and speak. Well, he figured out to shut the video off, but now he doesn't. Now he's got to turn them both back on. Something happened. Yep. All right, well, build wire, you're, you're muted as well. While we are waiting for Scott, uh, this is the extension of Shaw Lane. It was laid out by the planning board under our very small subdivision procedure. Uh, basically, it's a driveway serving a single house with uh, conservation restrictions on parts of the land. So I, I'm assuming that is why the uh, uh, applicant is asking for a waiver of restrictions. It is laid out as a town way, but this portion of Shaw Lane will never be accepted by town meeting. It's one of the conditions of the uh, approval of the very small subdivision. Where is that exactly, Bill? Shaw Lane is off of Mount Warner on the uh, on the horse farm side. So it's a small street, about uh, six to eight houses at the most. Yeah, I recollect now. Thank you. Yep. Right behind a new church, Joyce. Yep, I know where it is right now. Thank you. David, even though Scott's not here, Mike McDonald, who is the future homeowner, is here. Okay. Um, okay. Mike, do you want to uh, talk a little about what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it? Uh, hi. Um, yes, I'm uh, just looking to hook up to the town water is basically it. Um, not trying to make it into a big project. Um, as you can see by a couple of those quotes, it's quite pricey for what that is um so basically just looking to get a one inch line hooked to the main you have a well water now no there's no house there currently i have a building permit application in waiting oh. for um water department approval okay and does anybody know what the actual size of the pipe normally is and you're, are you asking for a smaller size uh, no, I think that's a pretty standard size. It's just, uh, I'm just looking to connect to town water. Simple okay. as that, you know, have a curb stop put on. And um, I think Scott would probably tell you other things uh, that in the regulations may or may not re be required, but I'm not positive of those, so. Yeah, I think that's a six inch AC line that is actually uh, there right now. There's a fire hydrant on the end at the somewhat of a turnaround. Uh, for fire protection for that street, but uh, I don't know how, how many feet were were they saying that they wanted it extended and and why? Yeah. Well, um, Steve from Carl's had, had spoken with Scott and set up the, the uh, set up a quote with him, and uh, that's about all I know as far as what they gave me, which is they were planning on uh, here, which is. Uh, 
an eight inch water line extended uh, approximately 100 lineal feet. So there, there's one quote for that with uh, with a fire hydrant at the end, and then there's another quote for um, just running a two inch line with a. Uh, I, I think it's I'm not even sure what it is to be honest with you, um, some sort of a hydrant, number two eclipse hydrant. Um, I think it's more for like to flush the line out or something like that, but I was unable to get them to give me a uh, quote for just installing a curb stop, a one inch standard court curb stop from the main. Um, I wasn't able to get that prior to the meeting. Mm -hmm. You wanted a shut off to that, to our main line in case you needed to have a shut off done to your house. Well, no, and every, every, every line coming off the main has a shut off on the curb. Right. So usually what happens is we just tap into the main and run a shut off to uh -huh. the curb and i i you know like as scott was telling me that they wanted to extend the water main and and whatnot and um you know it obviously adds a, a lot yeah. of money to the price it uh -huh. would seem, seem like a lot to extend that main for one house if that's the only house that can go there there's yeah. no more land there there's no more building there uh, and even then, the uh, fire hydrant, existing fire hydrant, is still within 500 feet of where I'm going to be building the house anyway. So, John, so, what size line usually goes into a house? Uh, five eighths, three quarter to one inch. I just figured it'd be safer to go with the one inch. Yeah, I think they're. I think they're mandating everybody to put one inch in now. Yeah, they may through regulations, but uh, I mean. If, if we're, we're never going to accept the street like um, Mr. Dwyer said, you're really, there's really no reason to expand it out any further, you know, really for no reason at all. It looks like Scott's coming in on his iPhone, if y'all want to give him a second. So Scott, our vote... You so our vote tonight is to uh, accept the uh, tie-in to the our, our water. Is that existing six inch there? Do you know, Mike? I I believe it's probably an eight inch based on the on the estimate that I've been given that they're going to an extension of an eight inch water line. Yeah. So that would be. I know in my initial conversations with with Scott that. They didn't know what was there, and he had to do some research into finding out what was there. And, but uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know a lot of information about it. So, yeah, I, I'm not. I mean, I'm familiar with it, but I, I haven't looked at a map for that area in a while. So, yeah, I, I have to deal with a uh, the the power, also, which there's a transformer right next to the last hydrant too. Then, so go ahead, Jennifer. Um. um so i have scott on my phone on speaker he's having super technical difficulties scott can you speak yeah, I can, hear you. can can y'all hear him yep i was just making sure they can hear you go ahead uh, yeah I'll, i'm sorry about that i don't know what's happening uh, My phone just hung up on Scott. David, can you call him from your cell phone? That might be the best thing. Yes, I can. Yes. Scott, David Phil's going to call you from his cell phone, which is from this century. So he's going to call you right back, okay? Yeah. Okay. My apologies. I have an iPhone 4 because of a damage and. <laughs> That's okay. 
we'll make this work one way or another. Hello. Hey, Scott, you're on speaker. Hey, um, I'm sorry, dude. Oh, what the heck's going on? Can it? Can everybody hear Scott? Yep. Okay, yeah. great. So, Scott, we talked a, a little bit. We talked with the um, homeowner about what he's yeah. what he's wanting to do. You were mentioning the water regulations, and I, I guess the regulations say it, it it's not supposed to be done. Um, can you tell us why, or if there's any way or, around that? Well, for what for whatever reason, it just uh, like with the, the the water quality aspect, I guess would be the biggest thing that we want a, a good flushing point where we can get some scouring of the pipe and et cetera, all the way to the end of the mains to keep people with uh, good water quality, especially on a dead end like Shaw Lane that's not looped. So I would be assuming that's why this regulation was set like this. I'm not I'm not sure what the date was when this was uh, written, but that's what the regulation says. No uh, services off the end of any main. Is it a is it a possibility to connect, um, I guess, further out from his house to go past, say, the end of the line? Because I'm assuming there's a fire hydrant at the end to flush the line out. Could he go slightly past where that fire hydrant is with his one inch, inch connection and connect there? So that way we could still get the, the line flushed? Well, I, I guess you could uh, connect in front of it, but we're not exactly sure what is there. Uh, our mapping of the area isn't that great and there is you know two services to the last two houses in that general area okay is that six inch scott eight, eight inch john it is all right eight, eight inch ac yeah and uh, i think that hydrant on that last house on the right is is the end of the line so it's it's in yeah, the there circle. Are land shows that there might be just a little uh, stuff off a of tee there, John. We were on it. We were not even positive until we get into it. There's so, still still a, still a house on the other side of the cul-de-sac too, which is quite a long ways. Certain thing also. So, so uh, Mike, are is that something that would be a possibility to connect on say the other side of the fire hydrant, the, the main side of the fire hydrant versus the side that's closer to your house. I know you're talking up, you know, probably a, a couple dozen more feet of one inch line and maybe having to dig up a little bit of the road, but I imagine it's significantly cheaper than uh, Carl's quote. Yes. That's, that's, well, that's what I'm hoping for. Or at least, I mean, I, you know, at that price, it's uh, much cheaper, you know, if I'm going to have to incur all that cost, um, you know, it'd be much cheaper to put a well in. So, right, Scott, is that a is that a acceptable compromise if you were to ex, uh, connect not at the end of the line, but say further down a little bit further down the street, and uh, you know enough that it's acceptable where you can flush the lines properly? Uh I, I, I guess so, but I just don't recommend steering away from our regulations. But you got you folks are the water commissioners, and and you can deem uh, however you feel. I just I just feel that we should go by our regulations. Okay. Wouldn't I? Wouldn't I be kind of connecting within the regulations if I was connected there? Because it's just a for a water shut off. It's not like I'm actually connecting past the end of the line or at the end of the line. Are they state regulations or Hadley regulations? Hadley. They're Hadley regulations, Jane. Any way to, um, you know, since this is a, a street that is not a uh, deemed town street it's never going to be made you know that isn't there some type of exception to this because of um of that how categorized as it's categorized there's only four I, houses on it. I think it is a lot of finishers can make any uh, exception that you want i'm just quoting the regulations if you want to permit something else, that's entirely up to you folks. 
So I'm not clear. Are there currently four houses and ultimately will be six houses or are there five houses and the one Mike wants to build will be six? No, there's four houses and this would be the last one on the end of the turnaround on that little, it's more like a little cul-de-sac road, you know? Uh, and it is a town road as far as I know. Yeah, the road is, but there's in the map, I think, as uh, uh, Mr. Dwyer was saying, was originally when that the land that I own had some sort of a road extension in the original lines of it, mm -hmm. which is no longer applicable for, for that lot. It's just a, simply a, a, a building lot with some additional open space land. So then one one building lot at the end. So, Joyce, go ahead. I was just going to say, if the house was there, I mean, if the building lot was there when the other houses were built, but just wasn't tied into it because there was no house there. I mean, I'm not sure exactly if that grandfather's it into other uh, rules and regulations before this one that we have came about. Um, I'm not exactly sure it's fair to, since this is the last house that's going to be built there, uh, to make them have an exorbitant price to tie into town water. It's going to it's going to affect us more than anything else. Uh, they're still going to pay water rates. They're still going to be tied into that. There's no sewer. They need septic, correct? Correct. Correct. No sewer. No sewer. Yeah, so, if he connects prior to the end of the line, you know, if we can find a way to do that, I guess technically we're within the regulations still that way, and we're not really waiving anything. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott, Scott, what what you want to do is you want to have him if he's going to connect. Uh, if if it is not at that hydrant branch, if that main does extend further down that little turnaround that you want them to tie in further down and put a hydrant in? Is that what you guys are looking at? Or, or is he going to yeah, test for this? Yes, not exactly. We were, looking, we were looking to extend the main and have him put in a, a hydrant at the uh, other end of the cul-de-sac, which would give us a flushing point to the end of the pipe and give uh, the customer good water quality. But I, it, it, it's, I don't know, it, like I said, John, I, I'm just – Following the regulations, I suggested to the customer to come to the board. If, if you guys want to deem something else, I, it'll probably be fine if he taps in front of the hydrant branch, but just that's not in our current regulation. I, it, and, and I understand the expense to the customer and all, and all the other stuff, but just it, it's not in my power to uh, make that decision. <laughs> I have one question for that. Can you actually tap into the branch that goes to the fire hydrant? No, we do not allow that. That that is a okay. definite no. Okay, I didn't. I didn't know since it's kind of going off to a T, and it, it would it, be an easier connection point. That's all. Uh, it's been done in the past, and it was never mapped, and we have nothing but problems with the ones that we just. Dug one up on Route Nine that had a hydrant branch sticking out. Oh, um, did it? Okay. On street and Route Nine that we didn't even know was there. You know. Yeah. All right. So what what can we do for this gentleman who has John? You got any ideas? I don't know. I mean, if he's willing to dig up the end of that pipe, and if they find that that pipe is extended, you know, throughout that turnaround. Then maybe you only got the cost. It's not, John. Our plan shows that it's not extended past that point. We have a plan on that. It's 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 definitely not there. It ends at the hydrant or you know, shortly after it. So do you think those two houses are already tapped off that hydrant branch or not? No, no, we, we have a, a tie in the plan for those. They are tapped in front of it. Oh. Okay. Is there enough room in that to to install another tap? Well, I guess to be determined that, uh, to see how good our, our plan is. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Paper. <laughs> okay, I move we let Mr. McDonald try to tap in front of the hydrant so that the hydrant can still be flushed. 
assuming that it is feasible. If not, he needs to come back to us. I'll, I'll, I'll second that. Um, and again, keeping us updated on if we have to make any other changes. Okay, motion by Jane, second by Joyce. Is that acceptable, Mr. McDonald, as far as uh, at least getting you kind of moving on this? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? I'm assuming that Scott's going to kind of give me the okay, which I need to get the building permit process going too. And then we'll okay. I guess. Uh, yes, I, I still have all your uh, uh, application. If I'll, okay. Uh, I'll gladly sign it. You just have to come in. Uh, and yeah, we sh we should probably meet and and uh, see about what what we want to do to for the process of this anyway so all right uh, uh it is uh can i ask is carl still the uh contractor is he well i don't know yet i mean because i don't have that okay. um i'd like to get a quote on on just yeah, the I, I the orange line so oh well, i mean once they test fit it and see if it's yeah acceptable scott then you can make that decision right there if they got the hold dog i mean yeah i, I mean it, it, john if, if we have to he he moves forward uh on the other side of those other ones i mean he'll have to trench a little further the other way i mean however it works out it's going to have to be i guess well that's ac so it's got to be a couple feet away from those other taps anyway isn't it well, i i understand that and those other taps are kind of right there this you know, depending what's there, so we'll have to. Uh, oh, so I might have to go towards the beginning of the street. I, I may have to go towards the beginning of the street, is what you're saying. Sounds like it, but it still sounds cheaper than moving the hydrant. Oh yeah, or a new hydrant. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's all, let's all work together here to make this, uh, you know, uh, feasible for our our resident. Great, thank you. Uh, roll call, Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalu. Yes. Ruskevitz. Upstain. Parsons. Yes. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. McDonald. Well, thank you for coming, and if you need to come back and see us, let us know. And uh, thank you. We'll work with you. All right. Thank you very Thanks. much. Um, Scott, you want to stay on for the two water, two, three water abatements? Yeah, please. Okay. So first we have 5.3 water abatement, three French street, three French street requests a water and sewer abatement. DPW does not recommend this abatement. And I think Sue is on here as well. Um, this abatement request is in the amount of, mm, let's see, $966 and 67 cents. Um, Scott, do you want to talk or Susan? I they, uh, David, they, they sent a letter. Uh, I'm not sure if you got if you have it available or not. Uh, that sounds like they, there was a tenant problem there, and the landlord wasn't able to remedy the problem of a leaking toilet till after the tenant left. Uh, the the water did go through the meter. And it was released to our sewer system. Okay. Um, Susan, anything you wanted to chip, chime in on this? No, nope. typically uh, we don't grant these abatements because uh, the water and, and sewage was treated. Okay. So we just need a motion one way or another to deny or accept the abatement. Make a motion to deny the abatement. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any other discussion on this one? Jennifer. Roll call, Phil. Yes. Devin Smith. Yes. Chungalu. Yes. Muscovitz. John Muscovitz. Uh, he, he's probably, probably abstaining. abstaining. Yeah, he's gonna abstain anyways, but. Um, I guess just move on. Oh. John, there he is. 
I'm sorry, uh, abstain. Okay, and Parsons. Yes. Thank you. All right, and then we have another abatement, 5.4, water and sewer abatement, 34 West Street. Uh, let's see. Uh, the amount is one twenty. Well, it looks like there's quite a few of them. Uh, Susan, do you want to tell us how much? Do you have the information on how much this is? I don't. I, I didn't see the abatement form. I'm sorry. Oh, the abatement okay. application. Oh, I sent it to you. So it looks like when the new meter was put on, it reads totally different from the old meters. Scott, uh, can I can I talk on that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the uh, so, so uh, we were notified of a high usage, and uh, we asked uh, we were asked if we could uh, what they call data log the meter, uh, water meters. We can. Uh, get some pretty good information out of uh, usage wise, uh, like through a 24 hour period. And that particular meter was older and we could not do that to that meter. So we changed out the meter for the resident just to uh, see if there was anything abnormal uh, with a new meter. And we did not find anything abnormal. Uh, I talked to the homeowner about uh, testing their meter, they were, they were concerned about the meter. Uh, they did not uh, come in to pay the fee to have the meter tested. So we did not do a, a third party test on the meter. Uh, in our experience, the, the residential water meters of, of that size are really are really accurate uh we either either they work or they don't kind of thing and uh we believe that there was no problem with the meter okay and so and it did just did go through the meter yes okay so whether you tested it or not you put a new meter in and a bill still the same in the next quarter the amount? It, it, I'm not exactly sure, John, what the uh, Tony been checked it a couple times just, just to see if there was at any uh, abnormal uh, use, and there was not. But the other thing that we have to remember is that uh, the meter is a mechanical device, uh, and typically when they malfunction, they slow. They don't jump forward. Yeah, I was I was talking to the homeowner, and uh, at one time that, they were big into asparagus, and they had uh, water going out to the barn. But he said that's been off for a while. But it, there still could be a leak from the house to the barn somewhere that they don't know about a, a small leak, and that that could be the problem. Uh, John, when John, when the guys went there, the uh those older meters do have the little uh, telltale for the leak indicator. And yeah. at that particular time, there was uh, no leak shown. Oh, okay. It wasn't, that little one wasn't spinning. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Motion please one way or another. Oh boy. Um, hard when your meters aren't really I don't know. You figured they were accurate, Scott? Yes, yes, Joyce. Uh that that meter is accurate. Uh like I said, they we didn't do a third party test on it, but we we did test it on our own flow bench just for our own sake. Uh mm -hmm. and it did it was uh, I think 98% accurate. How do they go but, about before I make my what, point, they go about determining if there's a leak from the house to the barn uh you you would probably notice that on the leak indicator the meter i mean maybe there maybe there was a leak and then they noticed it and they shut it off or whatever but uh definitely it seems like water went through the meter okay 
I'll make a motion to deny the abatement. Yeah, I mean, if it's 98%, so it's 2% slow, and then, but it's within a spec, so. John, we did it We did it on our own flow bench, just uh, for our own doing. It, uh, we actually had the, the uh, uh, Thai sales came out, and uh, there was some, did a refresher for everyone. We tested a few meters that day, and we just decided to test that one with the uh, uh, manufacturer or the, or the distributor, or the meters, just, uh, you know, for our own doing, like, it, it's, like I said, it wasn't done by a third party. It was done by us. Okay. We did our due diligence. Well, we did. We, we tried Joyce our best. We, uh, just wanted to make sure. And it, it seems that the meter is accurate. Thank you. My motion stands. Joyce so I motion. just, I just had a quick question. Oh, did someone, wait, someone needs to second her motion first, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Which you can do. Let that happen. <laughs> I said, let it happen. Let it <laughs> Okay, I'll second it. All right, there we go. Second by Jane. Now you can go with your question, Amy. Okay, so what, I, what I'm gathering, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that there was a meter that was reading that we thought was reading wrong. We put in a new one and we found out that it wasn't reading wrong. And now we want them to pay for the new meter that wasn't reading wrong. No. Okay. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. So I see shaking heads. So we're just... responsible for the meters, but the okay. testing of the old meter is the property owner's responsibility. Okay. Water going through the meter is the property owner's responsibility. Okay. So just so everyone watching is aware, so there was a meter that was quite full. <clears throat> we swapped it out with a new meter. It continued to have high usage, even with the new meter. And we tested the new meter, correct? And it was 98% within spec? We tested the old meter. Oh, the old meter. Okay. So the old meter was good as well as yeah. a new one. So. Okay. Or, or David, I'm not sure exactly if saying the new meter has high usage, but the new meter has consistent usage. Okay. Okay. I'm good. All right. We ready? And uh, then, Hold on, Susan. And next, uh, I believe next week, we are going to send the file for reads. So we'll know exactly if there's a, there's a problem uh, once we do the radio reads. Perfect. All right, Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call the vote. Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Muscovitz? Abstain. Ann Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right, now the last one on this long list. Uh, water abatement infrastructure charge 27 Roosevelt. Collector's office is requesting an administrative abatement for 27 Roosevelt Street in the amount of $78.75. Susan, do you wanna to speak to that? Yeah, this was a house uh, that had a pipe burst, a vacant house that had a pipe burst and the water was shut off at the street. Uh, however, the reading was done kind of almost simultaneously with the water break. So we ended up billing it. So we're just getting rid of the bill since the water was shut off at the street. Okay. okay. Motion to accept the abatement. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Uh, any other discussion on this? Uh, Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? <laughs> Might have stepped away. Yes. Uh, yes, okay. thank you. Chungaloo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Upstate. Thank you. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. Enough of that fun stuff. Um, <laughs> Sorry. 5.6. Edward, Hop Edward Hopkins Foundation request for storage space. Um, Kathy is here uh, to talk a little bit about this. And I'll, I guess I'll just give a little bit of background. So the Edwards Hopkins Foundation has used upstairs in the Goodwin to store their stuff, but they really haven't had a spot to allow people to come in and see their stuff. 
which is a lot of historic yearbooks and uh, well, Kathy, why don't you tell us what kind of stuff do you have up there that people would like to see? Thank you. Uh, I'm Kathy Tudor and I'm president of the Edward Hopkins Educational Foundation. Um, we initially had some space at the Historical Society. We actually had a room there. And then in 2019, that fall, we were asked to leave because they needed the space. At that point, we packed everything up and stored it at Hooker School on the second floor. And then we all know what happened to Hooker School. So when Hooker School was being torn down, the town very graciously moved everything we had to the second floor at Goodwin, which is actually the Hadley Media Space. So right now, all of our belongings are there packaged and we would like a space that would be accessible to the public. Ideally, we would love to have a space at Town Hall, realizing that Goodwin has to be uh, renovated before anything like that could happen. But if we could have a temporary space, we have some great things. We have a lot of old yearbooks. And just to give you an example of, of how we help people, and if you remember the terrible fires in Northern California a couple of years ago, I received an email from the daughter of a former resident who was very upset that he had lost his 1970 something yearbook in the fire. And she wanted to know if we could help. Well, between what we had and what the superintendent's office had, we did find one and we sent it out to him. And that's just an example of something that we can provide by the materials we have. Um, we also have a lot of very interesting old scorebooks. People would see their grandparents or their great grandparents or these names in these scorebooks that go back to the 20s that we have. We have um, a lot of old, one of, I don't know, John Waskevich, you would remember Bud Nealon. Uh, Bud Nealon was one of the coaches at Hopkins for years and also a teacher. His wife, before her passing, donated a little toddler outfit that he had when he was a little kid. Uh, we have that. We have some of the old uniforms um, that people had. And class photos. We found class photos like senior class pictures. Back years ago, I guess they left them at school if they didn't take them um, in cardboard frames. And those are back in the 20s and 30s. Uh, a weekly newsletter that was put out at Hopkins that date back to the 40s and 50s. So we have a lot of things that people who are doing research or, or just are interested in family history would love to see, but we have no place for anyone to see it. So if we could, you folks could come up with a temporary space for us where we would be accessible to the public with handicapped access, we would be most grateful at this point. And this is with the understanding that obviously uh, stuff will have to move. For example, if we put you on the first floor and then we go to do the remodeling, uh, you know, it could be four months, could be six months, and you might have to be hauling it back upstairs to, uh, you know, put it back in storage. Yeah, I, we, um, that's perfectly understood. Yes. But you've also been kind of mothballed in storage for going on two years now, right? Yes. Yeah. Almost three. Okay. What, what happened with um, historical or uh, Mac Gresses? Do they have any room over there or is that where you were at? Or? That's where we were, John. Uh, we were upstairs on sort of like a porch extension and yep. then they, they needed the space. Okay. But the other problem there is it's not handicapped accessible. Yeah. And it's not open that often. We'd like a space where we could be open more frequently and we would man the space. or woman in the space, whichever. So Carolyn, um, I know we don't really have an update on the good one because we're waiting on the municipal building committee, but um, is this something they could use in the meantime, the first floor, since it is handicap accessible and then just knowing that they're gonna have to move everything back when the time comes? I, I, I would really, um, I'd want Gary's, I think that's something to address the municipal municipal building committee, because um, they've, they've wanted to keep it empty because we have files here that we'd also, I, I know you're gonna bring that up and then uh, bring storage up in general. Um, so I right now nothing's happening. I don't, 
know when it's going to start. It's up to the municipal building committee. So um, I, I think it is important that you bring Gary into it and let them know this is happening. But um, I don't see why, why not. I, I think that building's been sitting for a few years. Is so. there any temporary space for a year, let's say, till we get good wind together at the library or the senior center? Or Jane? Um, and I've already made a request at the senior center um, actually last year and was told there was no space there. I was wondering about the conference room in the new um, North Hadley Fire Station. I wasn't no. No, where it existed. No, why are you gonna why are you gonna do that? Why you, I mean we can't put articles and things in there in case they ha they have meetings up there all the time with uh, Hampshire Six. They have uh, drills and things that they do at least once a month that just started up again. Okay. Um so I want to let the MVC do what the MVC does, but at the same time, the Municipal Building Committee hasn't met since Thanksgiving is my understanding. And so I kind of think we should just say, hey, we're going to use the space, it's our building. And you know, when you guys are ready to actually put a shovel in the ground and do something with the Goodwin, then we'll you know, give the, the Edward Hopkins Foundation the notice that they need to move their stuff back up and, and make sure it happens within you know, a short amount of time. Um, I'm yeah. going to start going to the building committee meeting now. I don't teach classes anymore at night, and they haven't had a meeting for a while yet. So I know it's on Tuesday nights. That's when I used to teach the class. So uh, maybe we can uh, bring this up then and see what we can, you know, decipher off because there's another group asking for some room too, correct? Um, that's town hall asking to put uh, files over there and, and store yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm just fearful that if I mean this this building belongs to us. That's that's the reality here, and we make the decisions. And I'm just fearful that if we keep allowing the municipal building committee to make all the decisions here, that we're never going to get anything done. And you know, like I said, they haven't met since November. Um, so the the thing was is that I and I believe that they wanted to make. Uh, rooms and get things done over to the uh, uh, get things done over to the Goodwin so that it is accessible and is usable. Um, I can't see why we can't uh, make it of some use to the uh, Edwards uh, committee and, uh, and any other, you know, maybe more room over there, what we, what we had talked about. So um, that needs to really come to the forefront at this point because they're asking us actually or other people have asked us to purchase the St. John's Church uh, for the park and rec so you know these are things that are on our place you know me in old buildings they don't sit well uh, I just got rid of one so I mean I'm not really looking to do another building but I think what we have here we should certainly use to the best of our advantage and, and have people be able to access them. And yeah, I, I mean, have, they've got some things the in. The library is handicapped accessible, so, you know. The electrical yeah. things and the flooring and things of the on the top floor, I think that needed to be addressed. David. Yes. Uh, I, I, I know that, uh, as far as like building maintenance goes, there's going to be a little uh, work to bring that back to usable. I think uh, it's kind of in disarray a little bit. The first floor after the move out, uh, Gary, I know hasn't really done anything there because of the plans for uh, renovating the building. So just to let you know, there, there will be a little work on our behalf to get it back usable. And I know that the cleaning service uh, in that building has uh, very, very minimal. They think they clean the restroom or something once a week and that's it. So, so there is there is some work to be done. It, yeah. Scott, is it enough where we could just give them a corner at least? I'm not talking about the whole first floor. I don't think they need the whole first floor, but if you know, we give them a, 
10 by 20 space or something with a table that they could put some stuff out and, and have someone come in is, is that doable? I know. I, I, I think so, but I haven't been in there for a while, David, be honest with you. And like I said, I knew, I know when we took some things out of there, a couple tables and stuff and move some things around, uh, I'm not even sure what's left upstairs there for a table or anything. We have to grab something and bring it in there. Okay. So there is a good space in the back of the second middle floor, if you will, where the fireplace is that can be separated from the rest of the building that might be an appropriate space. I was thinking that too, because we met there when we had some um, library meetings um, to the left as you go in, you go over and then separate room for sitting and then there was another room that had books in it so and it's kind of cornered off from the main center of the building so that would be quite accessible for uh, for this you know what I, right. I make a motion that we let the Edward Hopkins Foundation use the Goodwin Memorial Library until it's no longer practical because of construction and move-in date will depend upon getting it cleaned up. Okay, motion by Jane, second by Joyce. And, and Kathy, um, I know you've got some strong young volunteers uh, on the foundation, but I'm sure they can find some tables to drag in and, and uh, you know, push some junk around in there and make room for you. But that, but that might be a good project, Kathy, for some, um, Hopkins Academy students that we could tap into um, Annie and see if, um, you know, they always got things going on for their scholarships and uh, different things like that. So maybe we could tap into them also to give you a hand. Well, it would be, it would fit in with their community service project type thing too. Correct. Maybe, no, maybe they you. could help DPW clean the place up too. At yeah. least putting stuff in dumpsters or whatever. That sounds like. Okay. Um, anything else on this? Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Joyce? Chungaloo? Am I off? I'm oh, on. There you are. Yes? Just shake your head, Joyce. We can't hear you. Oh, she says. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not muted. You want me to yell? No, I can hear you now. I can hear before. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming, Kathy. And so Thank you all very much. We're very, very pleased. Thank you so much. And I'll just wait to hear from you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Kathy, I mean, you're going to need some permanent space. Maybe we can plan in into that renovation. I know we're planning... Uh, a few other departments so that's what we're hoping for john yes all right thank you yeah. i reckon you should thanks all right uh, reckon. Reckon. reckon i reckon you should <laughs> I've, I've my mom was an english teacher what do you want me to do i reckon <laughs> 5.7 goodwin storage uh carolyn what kind of junk are you looking to move so if Let's see. Oh, I am muted. It's a miracle. Um, so if you've been over at the uh, upstairs in the town hall, you've seen the, the room that you used to meet in is all files. And I would say the majority of it is planning. And yes, the, some of it's going to have to uh, be gone through to make sure it's, it's stuff that they have to keep. But um, we are using that room now for everything. Any, any type of meeting, um, once it gets over two people in an office, we're having to use that space. And so we're looking to try to clear out some of some of the stuff in there I think can be thrown out, but uh, the file cabinets um, are just taking up a ton of space and we could, we could have such valuable space there if we could use it. And so we're just looking if there's a possibility to store it possibly in the basement of the Goodwin. I'm not sure the condition of it. Um, I don't know if they can go downstairs here, but um, I know, um, we're just looking for space. It's we we, and, we could and, that, room, that space is so valuable. Hey Bill, can, can we store them in the bottom of the uh, Russell School? No, not these are files, and it's not temperature controlled over there. There's no heat. There's no there's no, no okay. there. 
The okay. good one's at least climate controlled. Bill, how are you guys making out with uh, transferring some of that stuff electronically? I know you were talking about it at one time, but. That is an ongoing discussion and um, we don't have a solution for it. We are considering um, piggybacking on the services. Uh, the building inspector's office has someone who's been scanning their files on the planning board scanner, which is also in the upstairs conference room. And um, in the next fiscal year, we're talking about maybe putting some more hours in for that person to scan planning board files. Um, but it has been a project that got hiccuped by COVID. Um, so what we need is secure storage. We need climate controlled storage. Basically, we need the same respect as your files get. Uh -huh. um, so um, it it is there is um, a line item in the budget for planning board support. Then we're visualizing that as primarily being someone to do the do the scanning, but it hasn't happened in any significant percentage yet so does that mean bill that you need to look or shall we um in the past we've tapped into umass and seeing if we can get some um uh, students over here to help us with different things um anything else i mean there might be people over there that are interested in the planning aspects of town and whatever in government i'm wondering if we can tap into that carolyn is there something that we could uh look at for umass i mean i know they're on break right now having a grand time down there in florida but um uh, yes I, yeah. I can address that uh bill has alluded to it that is uh something that we actually have put in as a, as a type of shared support services uh, Terry downstairs is presently doing the scanning, scan, this, using this large scanner and getting it into a, um, a, you know, a file is you have to use it all the time to use it right. And so what I think that was probably one of the hiccups is that it's very to retain that knowledge during COVID, like everybody who was trained on it, they forgot. And so Terry has, is trained to do all of the uh, building inspectors file files and maps and all of that. So sh this would be a perfect fit to help the planning board. You really need somebody who's using it all the time. And um, that's part of what that room is being used for right now is to have, the, it's a large, large machine. How um, many hours does Terry work? So right now I think she's 10 or 15 in building. Um, and that's what we were gonna be still, and she was paid under the COVID uh, CARES Act. Um, there has been extra money that's keeping her there to assist with that. Uh, yeah. But starting at July 1st, we want to have that position shared between building and planning. That's not going to meet all of planning's needs, but I think it will help significant, significantly. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we are long overdue um, in helping planning board. We, we've talked about this now. Uh, for a couple of years now, we really need to get somebody on board and, and do that. So if she's not going to be able to, we need to really get somebody in there that will be, but I'm hoping she'll expand her hours and we can do that. She's, she's willing. It's just, it, it'll be up to uh, what gets approved uh, for the budget. So it, it becomes, uh, so if, uh, if the planning board plans are accessible where they are now, or somewhere similar, even if they're moved out to the hall, um, one person can work for both uh, select, uh, for both the building department and for planning board. If everything gets moved over to the basement of um, Goodwin, um, well, technically it's our scanner. Uh, it's yeah. gonna it's going to be a mess trying to coordinate scanning the building department's plans and the planning board's back plans, uh -huh. um, depending on where things are. Uh, the, the actual paper file cabinets are 
perhaps they're still the, our official record, but they're perhaps a little less critical. But still, they need to be. Um, it needs to be stored in a climate controlled space. So um, I'm not sure if the uh, building committee is working on on that. Will we? Will there be dehumidifiers and air purifiers in the basement of Goodwin? Um, you know, that's something we have to have to invest in one way or the other. Yeah. So is that when we reconfigured the first floor of the town hall, who is now in the area where we used to have Edwards um, things, the Hopkins Academy trustees in that front building? What's in there right now? Recre recreation? The park first room? To oh, yeah, yeah, park and rec. And who's in that other little cubby hole that's near the assessors? Board of Health. Or, yeah. Oh, the Board of yeah. Health. Okay. I just every, every room is every room is has got somebody in it except for where the um all the IT stuff is. Okay, I want to some one store. At Jennifer's office now old office is storage for built, uh, inspections. Inspections. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. What's Duke. in that back room off Jennifer's office? That's not your office. More plans. <laughs> yeah, they. It, so that's a shared storage space with a uh, building inspector, select board files, uh, HR files, and then we have a desk in there for when we have an extra person in working. Oh, and office supplies for the building. Okay. And, and, Bill, you do bring up a good point about that machine's got to stay where the file, where whatever needs to get scanned needs to stay with that scanner. Yeah. But maybe some of the files could be moved. That's my thought to identify and leave if the scanner and the scanner yeah. files. Yep. I mean, we need to think about this and we need to get the uh, building if you're gonna into move another meeting. So maybe contacting um, Gary Berg. Uh, and uh, Tim Nyhart to see when we can schedule a meeting soon. You know, you if, you move, if you move that scanner and the plans, is it uh, internet accessible over at Goodwin where we're going to put this stuff? Because if you can't download it, it's not going to work anyway. That's uh, where Hadley Media is right now. Yeah. But, but Goodwin, Goodwin Memorial, just for the record, is not connected to the server right now. Um, once the fiber optic is run, we'll probably That's be able great. to connect it relatively easy. But just to put that out there, it is not connected at this time. Yeah, so yeah. We, we can't even move it now then if, if we're going to keep working on it. No. Yeah, I think right now buildings, uh, the inspections, and, and I am aware it's planning uh, equipment, um, but uh, building is, she's got a whole system going um, right now. So I, I hate to disrupt that right now, if that's okay with planning, to just uh, keep her having it work here. Going forward, we are asking applicants to file electronically, <clears throat> but we didn't do that until, to, until COVID basically. We, we have some electronic filings pre-COVID, but basically anything filed before uh, 2020 was probably on paper and um and has to be scanned in if we're going to get rid of the the, the the real literally they're like logs if you have uh, a 40 page uh uh 36 by 24 inch rolled plan uh, you could put it in your fireplace and burn it like a log uh -huh. maybe there's money in those once they're scanned yeah <laughs> maybe Nothing like a good fire bill Joyce, if, if I could just make one one comment, the Edward, uh, the trustees of Hopkins Academy and the Edward Hopkins Educational Foundation are two separate organizations. Okay, so the trustees are you and several other members. Correct. I okay. am the I am the president of the trustees, and you're Kathy, following your father's footsteps. And uh, Kathy Tudrin <laughs> is the or maybe is the chair, perhaps, of the Edward, Edward Hopkins Educational Foundation. Uh, I, I, 
I, I yep. did know that, and that was my mistake. So I know there are two separate entities. Thank you, Bill. The mother's Bill, clock. can you tell me the difference between them, please? The difference between the two organizations. The uh, trustees of Hopkins Academy have been in existence. Basically, basically, we started Hopkins Academy. Yeah. So, uh, you know, call it 350 years. Yeah. Um, around uh, at the time, Massachusetts did not require public education. Uh, as they required elementary education, the towns took that over. But not until around uh, the 1890s did the uh, town require, did the state require secondary education. And from the 1630s until um, the 1890s, trustees of Hopkins Academy literally ran the high school in the town. Mm -hmm. uh, when the state required secondary education, the trustees transferred our physical assets to the town and retained the endowment. And uh, in the ensuing years, we have grown our endowment. We uh, fund scholarships and prizes at graduation. The Educational Foundation, um, I actually have to let them speak for themselves, although I did some work for them. Um, basically are another supporting organization for the Hadley Public Schools on the scale of the Mother's Club and the uh, uh, PTO. So Hadley is really blessed that we have multiple supporting organizations for our educational um, situation with lots and, of scholarships. And that, all, and that all speaks to, I can relate back to when I was on school committee, all of these institutions were very much into our accreditation and how we were perceived by that. And it spoke very highly of our education here in Hadley. So um, I thank each and every one of you who participate in this. And when I first was on school committee, Bill, your father was up there handing out the diplomas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I don't want to take us too far off track, but I think yeah. the thing we're most proud of in the current era is that the trustees of Hopkins Academy over a 25 year period put together all the little parcels of land that allowed the school to expand its playing field by 100%. Yes. Yes. Much Thank you for that clarification. Muchly appreciated. Absolutely. All right. So where we go forward? So can we have the Municipal Building Committee join us next meeting, Carolyn? Do we have a lot on the agenda or is that doable? Uh, it's definitely grown. Um, I can, yeah, we can. Okay, because now that, you know, things are starting to return to normal after COVID, I mean, we were able to deal with our conference room being a storage spot for two years, and that's that's all coming to an end now. And so we've, you know, we're, we're juggling stuff from one building to another, one room to another, and we really need to get the good one rolling if we're going to solve some of these problems and not just kind of keep kicking the can. So let's let's find out what they're doing and what their plans are. Okay. Um, and so I guess we don't have, unfortunately, Carolyn, we don't have an answer for you for tonight. <laughs> well, I think it helps. It, I think a lot of good points came up and it will, um, I think it's gonna be just meeting with those that are impacted by the lack of storage and see what's available in town. I think it's, it's, it's additional conversations to see what's out there. Could we heat the Russell School, Joyce? <laughs> oh my God, you're giving me allergies for God's sakes. <laughs> you know her versions of, uh, of heat involves oh. all the games, so. <laughs> That's, that's actually, another topic, not tonight, because I don't think I could take it. <laughs> actually, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, actually, you know, there's, there's a couple of- You know of what, Jane? As I say at work, if you don't like it, fire me, because that's the way I feel. 
couple of those rooms at Russell School are climate controlled, believe it or not. When the state came in, they put air conditioning in there. Yeah. And the power's still on. We're still paying a power bill there. So, you know, there, there is another option there. Yeah. I don't think so. So, so let us let us gather together this building committee and um, see what we can come up with. Bill, can you join us for that meeting too, so you can have a say in your records? Yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe they can come in and come to our meeting, the next meeting, which would be nice. It's out there. Okay. All right, um, 6.1 annual report dedication Fred Oakley Award. The select board has received nominations for the dedication of the annual report of uh, John Karish and Tom and Janine Giles and Oakley Award, Gene Baxter. So we need we, to decide. Well, I, I think I would like to do both for the town book um, or at least I think John Kerr certainly deserves that nomination. Um, we could also do Janine Giles for the Freddie Oakley Award with, um, who was the other one you said? Um, Gene Baxter. Baxter. I, I think that would be uh, appropriate. Does anybody else agree with me? Can I make that a motion? Can you repeat the motion one more time? Uh, dedication of the town book to John Karish and the uh, Oakley Award to Jean, uh, Janine Janiles and uh, Jean Baxter. Uh, Jennifer, does that kind of fit what we've done in the past as far as? Y'all have um, often done more than one person for, e for the dedication. In my past that I'm trying to remember, I think that Oakley has only gone to one person but I don't see why it couldn't go to two people. I mean, I'm, I'm very, let's, no, let's do like you had said, let's do yeah. the, into, uh, John Karish and uh, Janine Jan Giles on the uh, town book and uh, Jean Baxter on the Fred Oakley award. I'll make that one. Uh, I'll second that one. Motion by Joy, second by Amy. Any discussion on that? No, John, John was part of the parade committee in a legion for, I don't know, the, the 40 years I can remember and, and all the legionnaires every year for the parade, you know. As, as many people have and, you know, he did a lot of other things between uh, being very generous with the schools and any other organization that would come through Kirsch uh, Oil. So I, I certainly think that he... He deserves that award, uh, as has uh, Janine Janiles and with the uh, Hadley Garden Center, both her and Tom uh, certainly supported everything that went on. They gave us our wreaths every year for town hall. And, um, you know, uh, I, I just think that, you know, they were an outstanding couple and supported many other organizations in town also. They were absolutely huge in the first church in Hadley as well yeah. and they um did the flowers every sunday and they yeah. also did the uh poinsettias on christmas and they were just really really huge in the community yeah absolutely okay well uh if nothing else jennifer roll call uh roll call vote phil yes nevin smith yes chungalo Yes. Muscovitz? No. Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, did we miss 5.8? Uh, yes, I did. Thank you. Uh, 5.8 Community Preservation Act Agreement. Select Board will vote to accept the Community Preservation Act agreement between the Community Preservation Committee and the Hadley Housing Authority for the Golden Court Window Replacement Project. So moved. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any discussion on this? This is what we voted on for town meeting, right, Jane? Yes. 
And is well needed. All right, roll call, Jennifer. Roll call, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalo. Yes. Miskevitz. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Can we find out who's actually running the contact person who's running that place now from Amherst? Her name is Pamela Rogers. And she's from the town of Amherst or? She started, she, I don't know when she, I don't know how long she's been with Amherst, but she's been with them long enough that she was with Amherst when they took on Belchertown and then Hadley as um, part of a regional group. Oh, that's a number of years. Not really. Hadley only joined in uh, 2019. Yeah, a couple and, years ago only, yeah. And in fact, COVID's happened ever since. So there hasn't really been a review of that. Uh -huh. Did that couple arrive for the reservoir dock thing? No? Okay. They haven't, and I emailed them. So I guess their true love will have to wait for another night. True love. We can vote on it unless you want to have further discussion. I mean, I say just, well, hold on, let's, let's finish up with, are we done with that annual report or are we, oh yeah, yeah. we both done that. Okay. Um, who's Daniel? Daniel, you are not here for the wedding, are you? Daniel. I don't know, it just says Daniel. And uh, He's on twice. No, this is another, this is another Daniel. He's joined us a couple of times. Oh, I just, that's oh. fine. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't someone for the wedding. Um, so do you want to vote on it? I mean, it seems pretty simple. Okay, I move that we let the couple use the reservoir, give them one day parking permits for their vehicles and wish them blessings. And tack on a deposit for trash pickup, right? How much? $100. Uh, okay. Can we make that's it two? That reasonable? If we make it two, that's not really going to cover much DPW time, just a hundred bucks. All right, or, two. Is that okay, Jennifer, with the, kind of what we do with the comment and whatnot? Yes, and I'll return their deposit if, if it's, um, okay, and does the deep, is the DPW able to check it out and make sure it's clean beforehand? Scott, are you still there? I, I am. I am. If if that's your wish, we will do that. Okay. Can I ask for a clarification? Are you saying that's in case it's not picked up that that is imposed, or is there an expectation that DPW is going to pick that up and they're getting paid for it? No, no I think in case it's not cleaned up. Okay. I just it was a little unclear. I just want to make sure. But DPW is going to check it in advance so that we don't turn over a nasty place to them. Well, I didn't mean that. I just meant that Scott needs to see what it looks like so he can say that beer can was there before and those other seven weren't, is what I meant. I didn't mean that the DPW would go and clean the reservoir. Okay. Even if it Take does your camera. It. Take your camera, Scott. You'll be good. There, there, <laughs> there is trash and debris there a lot. You know, people don't respect it as as good as you would hope, but uh, we do go there once in a while and pick up the trash. So I don't think it's going to be a big deal, Jane. Do we have any kind of sign down there that says, um, please take your trash out with you? Uh, we do not, but you know, it, you know, you know there, there is some, uh, uh, you know, beer cans and things of that nature kicking around and, you know, things you're not going to probably prevent with a sign anyway. So kind of is what it is. And there will be a sign going up um, hopefully soon from Kestrel. Um, they put one up or they are putting one up at the end of Chimura. Um, there's supposed to be one on off of Bay road too, kind of laying out the rules and, and whatnot of the area, but um, I'm not sure where they are in that process. So. Um, all right. So Jane made a motion and was there a second? Unmute me. Oh, 
a second, muted. second. Wait. Wait. Don't do anything yet. They need to also do something about parking and letting people know how many people are going to be there and letting letting public safety know that they're going to be up there so they don't get towed. I will coordinate a one day wedding pass with with the couple and make sure that Lieutenant Cook um, has a list of all the attendees of the wedding uh, and their vehicles. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Absolutely. Wouldn't it be dandy if they went in to have their wedding? They came out and there was no cars. <laughs> Look expensive. at the money we could make. I know. <laughs> Jennifer, for your for your meeting minutes, that was a second by Amy, correct? You got that? Okay. All right. So if we're ready, roll call, please. Roll call field? Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalo. Absolutely. Muscovitz. Yes. And Parsons. Yes, under the condition that they come to the next meeting and thank us since they didn't come to this one. <laughs> I will mention that y'all would like to see them. <laughs> All right. We, we want to wish them well. Yeah. It's a blissful couple. Yeah. Uh, review of COVID-19 sick time, 6.2 on the agenda. Select where to review the COVID-19 paid sick, sick time guidelines, Carolyn. Yeah, as of yesterday, the state um, is no longer uh, providing a reimbursement to municipalities um, under the state emergency paid sick leave program that is um, that's over. Um, so I'd like to recommend to the select board to uh, revert back to um, our normal uh, policy of if you're sick, you have to use your uh, whatever you have in your accrued sick time. Um, we've had only used had one person uh, use the, the paid sick leave program um, that was in January. We haven't had anybody since January who's who's been out with COVID and had to use that program. So um, that would be my recommendation is to treat it as a normal. If you got sick and you were homesick, you would use your own sick time. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Sounds like we're getting back to normal. Uh, any discussion on this? Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right, last item on the agenda, 10.1, Town Administrator Report. I'll go quickly. Okay. But I, I, I did want to let you know that the town did receive the community development block grant money um, that's funding from the Department of Housing and Community Development. And that is going to be funding a housing uh, rehabilitation program and a program called Aging in Place. And it's really to help those living with a disability and or elderly on fixed incomes who need to have their house repaired, whether it's a to help with a safety violation or accessibility. So that's really good news. It's a shared uh, grant with uh, South Hadley and uh, there's 10 housing units for the housing re rehabilitation for both towns um, and the aging in place, uh, there's 15 homes between the two. So that's all managed through uh, uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So it's a real, I've been a part of that program before in other communities. It's a wonderful program. And I talked to Haley today and they already have a waiting list for that. So that's really good news. Um, and I'll actually will also fund an ADA uh, planning, uh, municipal planning um, guide, which will help us as we go towards Goodwin and wanting to put a handicap, I'm sorry, a elevator in. If we can meet the requirements um, that need to be put in place uh, for uh, the Mass Commission on Disabilities, that helps fund projects like that. Doesn't fully fund it. We have a few more steps that we have to do, but that's a big part of it. So that's really good news. Uh, the Finance Committee and Capital uh, Finance started committee met last night to go over the budgets. Capital starting on Monday. Um, just uh, two. Uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to two departments. Um, I, I'm trying to do that on a regular basis, but I, since John Harris said, I don't know if he's just recording or, or if he's on, but um, he did a great uh, taping of the 
um, Hopkins Drama Club's monologue. It was the, let's say, it's a tongue twister. The Hopkins Drama Club's <laughs> monologue, sure. murders, murders, and more. And more. I went on yes. Saturday. It was really good. It was good. And I really encourage <laughs> you guys to go to the YouTube channel to watch it. Um, but John did a really, a really good job. So um, I just wanted to give a shout out to him as well as to um, the Parks and Recreation. I've invited our new director, Greg, to come to the next meeting, although it's getting a little busy. So I might add him to the to the uh, another meeting, but uh, you, you need to he see what uh, all that he is doing in the programs. And one of the programs I wanted to highlight is um, Greg. Greg has an extensive extensive background in coaching baseball, and he's putting on two free clinics. And um, one is let's see, what was it? Defense and hitting. I didn't know you had defense in baseball, but they do. And he's putting two on, and there's already 92 registrations, and so that's remarkable. Um, there's lots more programs that I really wanted him to be able to share with you. So I've invited him to a future meeting so he can do that. So, um, and just dates to remember, uh, we still have two open seats for elections um, and that's moderator and constable. So papers can still be pulled for all the seats until March 25th, but they have to be turned in by March 29th. That's it. Sounds good. Uh, announcements. Uh, I have, of course, these things coming. Uh, we have the passing of uh, Francis Bud Gnatic. He was a veteran army, and he also attended Hopkins Academy. Um, we send our condolences to his family. We have Natalie Green Canby. Um, she was a resident of Hadley. She was a the veteran also. And then we had Margie by O'Connor. Uh, I happen to work with a number of years at Cooley, but um, she is local by um, person and we send our condolences to uh, her and her family. So um, that's it for this evening for me. Anybody else? All right. Well, you didn't get home in the daylight, Carolyn. I'm sorry. I know. I, I'm looking. <laughs> Better than nine o'clock, at least. Uh, all right. Well, uh, our, just need a motion. Next meet, our next meeting is the uh, let's see. April 6th. A yeah. April 6th. <laughs> and uh, town elections are May 17th. May 17th and town meeting is May 5th. May 5th before town meeting. So we all, we, we need before to get that before elections. We changed that last year. We did. So I we just need to get that out each week so that people are aware of it because it is a change in what we normally have done. Yeah, it's I've been sharing that at my tap each how soon time. can we put that sign out in front of town hall? from the DPW that says those dates? We typically put it out two weeks in advance. Um, I think a month might be useful at this point. Yeah. Given this people, is, this is, yeah, this is okay. the first year that we have done this. So I think people need to be aware of the time and the change. Okay, right. I will, I will um, put that together and get the request down to the DPW. Good, okay. thank when, you. I, don't remember what it used to read, but I would hope it would say, like, town meeting Thursday, May 5th at 7 p.m. Hopkins or whatever time we're having it, so that the whole thing is spelled out on the board instead of just May 5th. Yeah. Okay. okay. I will I will do my best with them and the amount of space on said board. It's already you have the on, big board there. It's already online, so... Maybe we can get a hold of the press, do a press release on it also, Caroline. Yeah, and on our our uh, TV channel. Yeah, it's already on our TV channel, so I see Yeah, we just, we just want to make sure that it's out there because not everybody has TV, not everybody has Spectrum. So we want to make sure that everybody is aware, no matter which way that we put it out there, that there has been a change 
um, and actually when voting will take place, when will that happen? We haven't addressed that yet. May 17th. Maybe the police and fire Facebook also. Yeah, so when is when is voting, uh, Jennifer? May 17th at the Senior Center. It's two weeks after town meeting. Two weeks after town meeting before. Okay, so we just need to get that out there so people are aware. Okay, I'll, I will work on those and Carolyn can tackle the press release. Okay. Right? Okay. And I'll put it in the senior newsletter for May, so that will cover everything. That would be great, Jane. Thank you. That would be good too, yeah. If uh, Jane brought it up, and I know Drew is working on it, but um, I guess some of the new cable boxes that Spectrum is handing out, people in town are not no longer able to see Channel 5 on, or was it 191? 191. 191. Uh, on their TVs any longer. So Drew right. is re reaching out to, that's a breach of their contract with the town. There's where everyone's supposed to have access to that that has cable. So uh, let people know they can always watch on YouTube if they have, you know, a smartphone or a computer, but um, we're, we're trying to find out why it's not possible anymore with the new cable boxes, so. Yeah, I had a long discussion with Drew actually and, uh... We still, we haven't had that third channel in three contracts now, and we're supposed to have it and access to it, and we don't. Yeah, I mean, it's not on TV right now, which it should be. Yeah. Well, let's, let's get a hold of Spectrum here and have a little conversation with them. Drew is... Uh, Good he, luck. Yeah, <laughs> Drew is talking to, I think it's Mass Access is the... Um, the group that he's talking to but we'll we'll report back when we have more so yeah they're they're in non-compliance with their contract at this point and if there's nothing go ahead jay we're we're in the process of negotiations with them for a new contract right so not yet not yet it's a multi-year process so the next step is to do a survey and obviously that would something be something that would be reflected on the survey the fact that they are not doing what they're supposed to be doing and people can't watch the uh, public access. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Not anything else though. Motion to adjourn. Motion so to adjourn. All right. Jane, second, somebody. Second. Amy. All right. I'll Third, uh, fourth, fifth. Right. Jennifer, roll call. <laughs> roll call Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungaloo. Yeah. Already waiting. Bye. Wiskevitz. Yeah. And Parsons. Yes, I'm so hungry. Thank you. I was eating bacon. All right. All right. Take care. Bye. Be well off. Bye. Bye.